We had a bond that no one could break. Scott and Sheila, those two were inseparable. They were everywhere together. If you saw one of them, you saw the other one. Until secrets, lies, and obsession tore us apart. All of a sudden, she wasn't thinking clearly, and so she didn't said things that I don't think she ordinarily would have. She was like, she's my best friend, guys. Everyone needs to know that she's my best friend, not anyone else's. This case in my 28 years of law enforcement is the saddest case I've ever been associated with. You know, this is your best friend and your murderer? Come on. There's no explanation for why it happened. This was pure evil. I always hoped that she was still alive. But after the first two, three weeks, I kind of figured that she wasn't. The remains were found about 45 minutes away from the victim's home. With a human eye, we probably wouldn't have seen it even if we had searched in that area. You got something here, Jimmy? Because she was under some logs and whatnot. Just branches and twigs and leaves on top of her. That's all that there was. They just covered her with brush and left her there. Mecca, we've located the remains. Investigators believed she had been stabbed between 30 to 50 times. Stabbing someone in general is an intimate crime. Uh, you don't normally see someone get stabbed in that way if you don't know them. It's much more personal. It's not like with a gun where you can stand at a distance. You have to be up close and personal. Side by side, we were just two small town girls looking for adventure. It was us against the world. From day one, she had my back and I had hers. But you have to be really careful who you trust. Yeah, let's do something this weekend. Even your own best friend can turn on I love you. you. Bye. This is a story about what happens when friendships become toxic. It's about the dangers of not listening to other people who see things in a relationship that you don't. It was like a fairy tale gone bad. A fairy tale turned into a nightmare. Scotter was a happy, happy kid. She really was. She always had a smile on her face. She was bubbly. My hometown of Star City is just like a tiny blip on the map. But even though it's small, it still has a lot of heart, just like me. We only have one stoplight in town, and it's just a really, really quiet, friendly neighborhood. Everyone keeps their yards mowed, and their houses are kept up, and just a nice family neighborhood. I was an only child, so it was always just me, my mom, and my dad. Both my parents worked hard, but we never had a lot of money or fancy things. But you can't put a price on love. And my parents gave me all the love in the world. I mean, the love I have for Scholar will never be found in any textbook or any magazine or anything anywhere to tell you how to love your kid because it was just there. I was a pretty typical kid. I was kind of a tomboy. I loved to play outside a lot or go fishing with my dad. But I could also be a girly girl too and like play with my tea party set and my dolls. I always had lots of friends, but no best friend, not like a sister. You know, someone who knows everything about you and you know everything about them. I was an only child too. But the situation in my home, that was a little different. I didn't grow up the way Skylar did. Before she leave and entered school, her father was in a serious car accident, and that changed not only his life, but Sheila's life. Things were never the same after that. My dad was in a wheelchair, and he had other issues, too. He couldn't take care of himself, let alone me. Then my parents got divorced, and my mom got custody of me. 
In a way, she lost her father twice. She lost him when he had the terrible car accident, and then she lost him again when her parents got divorced. It was pretty much just me and my mom. All we had was each other. But she worked a lot, so I spent a lot of time alone, just kind of doing my own thing. One neighbor said was that she was just quiet, she would smile, um, not interact a whole lot. I guess you could say I had my guard up, just to like protect myself from getting hurt. But when I was around people I really trusted, that was a different story. And in the summer of 2003, that's when I finally found someone I could really like totally and completely trust. When Skylar was eight, she started going to summer camp, day camp for kids out of school. We dropped Skylar off there in the mornings to uh, play all day or swim all day or whatever they did all day. And one day when I picked her up, she was telling me about this girl she had made friends with. Hi. Hi. My name is Skylar. And, you know, she said her name was Sheila. Sheila and I first met during swim hour. We started talking, and once we discovered we were both only children, we like instantly clicked. Yeah, I liked Skylar right away. She was really nice and really easy to talk to. And whenever we were together, we would laugh and be silly and just have the best time. When you're eight, you're just looking for somebody that is somewhat like you, somebody that's nice, somebody that you can get along with and wants to do the same kind of things you want to do. And whatever that special thing was for them, they hit it off immediately. And, and over the years, it only grew stronger. Sheila became the sister I always wanted. Having her around was awesome. But there was one problem. She lived about 25 miles away from me. So year after year, we were never in the same school. But weekends? That was our time. It was a pretty good chore getting them back and forth, you know? And uh, we would take Skylar out there and let her stay the weekends, and sometimes Sheila would come and stay with us. They would go to her room, they would giggle, we could hear them laughing, come out occasionally for something to drink or something to eat. But, you know, they was mostly in her room doing their girl things, you know, probably talking about boys, I don't know. As we got older, year after year, Sheila and I got closer and closer. No way we were gonna let any distance come between us. Skylar was my best friend, so if we weren't together together, there was always the phone. Yeah, like they would share literally every detail of their day and every part of their life they would just share to each other. I mean, every day, Skylar would get off the school bus and come home. As soon as she walked in the door, the phone started ringing. I mean, it was just like, ma'am, she knew she was home. And from the time she walked in the door till the time she went to bed, she was on the telephone. What are you doing this weekend? My dad just didn't get it. But no one got me and Sheila except me and Sheila. She was my other half. They were always giggling and laughing, and you know, they seemed to be pretty good match. And after my mom got remarried, Skylar became like the most important person in my life. Because now that my mom had my stepdad, she didn't seem to need me as much. <laughs> okay, bye, I love you. But the good news is that when my mom got what she wanted, a new husband, I got what I wanted, and that was to be closer to Skylar. Sheila's family moved to Star City in her freshman year of high school. Sheila was ecstatic about coming to UHS so that she could be with Skylar. They had been close since they were eight. They hung out together all the time, it seems like. They were constantly together, and that was the one thing that she had in her life that was unchanged. I couldn't believe it. Sheila was gonna be living just minutes away from me. And best of all, we were gonna be starting our freshman year together at University High. I was so excited to start high school with my best friend. But the more time I spent around Skylar, the more I started to realize that I had no idea who she was. What is wrong with you? 
or what she was capable of. It was not a random act. It was a pre-planned, premeditated act. This was pure evil. Star City used to be the type of place where people felt comfortable leaving their doors unlocked in the evenings and not locking their cars. That definitely changed after all of this happened. That doesn't happen anymore. It was such a different type of crime. You don't hear about that girl on girl violence. It shows you can't trust even your best friend. Freshman year was full of changes for me. New stepdad, new home, new school. But Skylar and me, we were the same old BFFs, only better, because now there was nothing keeping us apart. I think that's the point at which their bond changed. It probably grew even stronger then. Skylar and Sheila both you know, said that they were each other's sister. They were both only children. and. It you was know, the sisters they never had. Those two were inseparable. They were everywhere together. I mean, it was nothing. If you saw one of them, you saw the other one. They were like Siamese twins. True, but as we got older, we definitely had our differences. Me, I took school very seriously. Since my parents didn't have a whole lot of money, I knew that my only chance to go to college was to get a scholarship. So when it came to my grades, I didn't screw around. She would make hundreds on tests, get awards for this and that. She wanted to be, go into to law school and be a criminal lawyer. I was smart too, and I always got good grades. But freshman year, I started to, well, notice boys more, and they were noticing me too. I like the attention, I'm not gonna lie. It was new and kind of exciting. Sheila was very pretty, pretty to the point where people thought she'd be in beauty pageants. Physical appearance was very important to Sheila. <laughs> she was uh, always looking in the mirror too and like making herself look better and picking at herself and all that kind of stuff. I never saw her not dressed up or not looking good. <laughs> Remember that shy, quiet girl who used to keep to herself? Well, I wasn't so shy and quiet anymore. She would definitely talk to some guys. <laughs> she talked to a lot of guys. But it wasn't just me. My bestie Sky was right by my side. And we were gonna have these adventures together. Sheila got Skyler to hang out with the older crowd. It's almost like Skyler was a puppy dog following Sheila, kind of. He started sneaking out at night when all of us parents were in bed. And at first, before the girls had their driver's license, they would call up boys that had their driver's license, and the boys would drive them around. All the sneaking out and joyriding and partying, it was kind of like a game we played. Like, how many times can we do this and get away with it? It was crazy and fun, and it made me feel like I was a rebel, like Sheila. I mean, Skyler was keeping up with her schoolwork and everything, but it just seemed like she was doing more things that weren't that good for her. One teenager in particular, who was one of Skyler's oldest friends, noticed the change in Skyler's behavior when she got to be in high school. A lot of it was the temper tantrums. You know, that was a change, drastic change. She was in trouble all the time. I mean, everything from back talking to her mother, I mean, she talked to her mother horribly. She would lose her temper over the littlest things. My parents were always in my business. They even wanted to control what time I went to bed. I mean, I wasn't a little kid anymore. One night, I told her it was time to go to bed. I had to you know, get off the computer. She started screaming and, you know, all out, rah, rah. So Dave was downstairs and he heard her screaming and yelling. He come up the stairs. Well, of course that made her matter. Well, she even threw a punch at Dave. 
And Dave said, honest to goodness, he had been hit by grown men before, and it hadn't hurt him as hard as she threw that punch. And of course, I didn't hit her back, but I mean, she, she rocked me. It hurt. I thought it was hormones. You know, teenage girl going through all these changes. I hated when I would lose my temper, especially with my parents. But I was going through changes, and I was trying new things. And some of those things my parents didn't even know about. You know, we've heard from sources that Skyler smoked marijuana and drank alcohol. Well, pretty much every teen does that, but I wouldn't have allowed it, you know, had I known it. Um, but when I looked at Skyler, I saw a diamond shining. I didn't see anything else. You know, she was my kid and she was perfect. So, you know, hindsight's 2020. I mean, I was on the honor roll. I had a job. I wasn't like some stoner slacker. And I wasn't looking for trouble. I just wanted to hang with Sheila and Sheila was all about having a good time. And I love that about her. But my other friends, uh, they didn't think Sheila was so great. A lot of Skylar's friends she had had for years and years wouldn't go around her if she was around Sheila. Because Sheila was the queen bee, she determined everything. Did She was so snooty sometimes and like, mm, I'm better than you, that kind of stuff. Whatever, Skylar's other friends were just jealous. And I was like, it's not my problem you people can't handle us being best friends. Slowly, her friends started pulling away from her. They would tell her, we don't want Sheila, we want you, but we are not inviting her because we don't really like her because of the way she behaves. So Skylar's response to that was, well, OK, if Sheila can't come, then I'm not going to go either. She just kind of pushed him to the side for her, for Sheila, that we just couldn't understand that. I wasn't going to dump my BFF for anyone. As far as I was concerned, Sheila was the coolest girl I knew. And you know what? Being around her made me feel cool, too. Skylar was obsessed with Sheila for quite a while. Skylar wanted everyone to know that Sheila was her best friend. She was like, She's my best friend, guys. Everyone needs to know that. She's my best friend, not anyone else's. And I thought nothing could ever come between us. We were going to be best friends forever. Until Sheila decided that she wanted a new best friend. A BFF is someone that's there for you your entire life until death. That definitely didn't happen in this case. Freshman year got off to a great start. My BFF Sheila and I were finally in the same school, and we even managed to work it out so that most of our classes were together too. It was like, perfect. And then Rachel Schoff entered the picture. She came to University High from a private Catholic school. And the moment Sheila met her, our lives changed forever. Rachel had everything going for her. Talent, beauty, brains. She had all that. I thought she was very, very pretty and she seemed like a very good girl. Like she seemed so mature almost. Like Rachel seemed really mature and nice and genuine. And I really liked her when I first met her so much. I, I fell in love with Rachel. She was just great, loved her to death. As soon as she meets anyone, it's hard not to just keep talking to her. She just talks forever, and she's super nice. <laughs> Rachel and I met in class, and that's when I found out we had more in common than just being the new girls in school. Like, her parents were divorced, too, so we understood each other. Plus, she was hot and boy crazy. Sound familiar? So I told Skylar, hey, this girl needs to hang with us. OK, I'll admit. I wasn't so sure about Rachel at first because it had always been just me and Sheila. But Sheila thought she was cool. So I was like, OK, sure. And the more I got to know Rachel, the more I liked her. 
Skylar didn't seem to mind that Rachel had entered their little clique, the twosome that she and Sheila had. They were all hanging out, and Rachel and Sheila became really good friends. Rachel and Skylar became really close, and all three of them were just like the three musketeers for a while. Yeah, they were always together. Even in between classes, they would like meet in a certain part of the hallway. It was like, if you did see one of them, you expected to see the other two. They seemed to be happy when they were together, laughed a lot, joked around. At first, it really did seem like three was better than two. But then, the drama started. It's like they all wanted to be the queen bee of the group. I, I am not going with you. You can't just ditch me Come like on. that. You I said you would, would go. You will be fine. They were definitely catty. They were the mean girls that you hear about in school. They would argue to make their point. And like, if they were saying, OK, we're going to go to the mall after this, no, we're going to here because I want to go here. We want to get some ice cream here, then do this. And then the other one would be like, no, I said we're doing this, and we're going to go over here and then do this kind of stuff. This, you brought this up. This, this is, is ridiculous. ridiculous. Like, I can't me. believe that you would. So it seemed like they were butting heads and trying to f figure out who was going to be in charge. Really? Because you talk like this all the time. I wasn't the one trying to control everything. Far from it. But Skylar was, like, trying to boss me around. It got so old. Progressively throughout sophomore year, the fights definitely got worse than they were whenever their triangle first started. It was brewing up to something bad. In the spring of 2012, Skylar and Sheila were hanging out, and Sheila was texting someone on her cell phone. What's that? Who are you texting? I wasn't stupid. I knew she was texting Rachel, and the way she was acting was like she'd rather be hanging out with Rachel than with me. And that wasn't cool. Sheila, who are you texting? Skylar tried to grab the cell phone from Sheila, and Sheila smacked her hand. What is wrong with you? I came up during the middle of the argument, and I'm wondering what the hell's happening. Because <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> And then Skylar went and hit me in the face with her fist. At first, I was stunned. I mean, Skylar had never done anything like that before. But then I was like, OK, you want to fight, Skylar? And then Sheila either slaps or takes her fist and hits Skylar back. I'm sick of you texting Rachel all the time. And please not bring me out. And Sheila and Skylar are screaming at each other. I can't remember what they were saying but they were just screaming at each other at the top of their lungs. It was a nasty fight, really, really nasty. I was just like, wow, because that's the worst fight I've ever seen them in. I was like, dang. And that fight didn't even turn out to be the worst of it. The worst was yet to come. Other people outside of the circle saw in and tried to tell them, this is a toxic relationship, but nobody could see it at the time. It's only afterwards, when you get out of it, when you've escaped. In this case, they didn't escape. None of them escaped. After that horrible fight between me and Sheila, I was so upset. We had never fought like that before, ever. It was just brutal. And even though we made up the next day, things didn't get better. They got worse because with Rachel around, I felt like I was always competing for Sheila's attention. You could tell there was tension with who's better friends with who. As far as I was concerned, the three of us were fine until Skylar started acting all possessive of me. After she and Rachel got close, I think that's when Skylar's obsession with Sheila wore on Sheila's nerves just became Sheila and, and Rachel, and you could tell that Skylar was kind of getting pushed away. And when Sheila and Rachel got really close, they would often plan and coordinate their dress for, for class, leaving Skylar out. It made Skylar mad, because she knew that it was a deliberate attempt to exclude her. After all we'd been through, how could Sheila treat me like this? 
How could she just push me aside for Rachel and think I would be okay with it? Because I definitely wasn't okay with it. And I let her and Rachel and everyone else know it. All of a sudden, she wasn't thinking clearly, and so she did and said things that I don't think she ordinarily would have. Oh my god, Skylar and her tweets? Pathetic. Oh, and of course she made it seem like it was me and Rachel who were the problem. But honestly, she was the one with the problem. There, there are comments that I wouldn't make to anybody. Just extremely mean and angry, volatile. I'll admit that when Rachel and I first started hanging out without Skylar, I felt a little guilty. But now with her melodramatic tweets, I mean, if Skylar wanted to hang out with us so much, then why did she do stuff that she knew would piss us off? I mean, they would argue nonstop. Like, you don't understand. They, like, every day at school, going into school, you would see them argue. Like, this is, this is with, between us. Like, you really don't. But then the very next day, they'd be BFFs again and talking, like, look, look who texted me this and all that and just doing the girl things. If you look back at it, they were always together, so it must not have been that bad, you know? Overall, sophomore year was just full of lots of ups and downs. As crazy as it sounds, we'd fight, then we'd make up, then we'd fight, then we'd make up. We were back to where we always were, best friends. And we were back to doing everything together. One night, the girls decided to have a sleepover at Rachel's house. It was a chance to just hang out, watch movies, gossip, and have fun, all three of us, together. But I was like, we're not kids anymore. Let's make this a real party. The drinking, it was like harmless fun. But what happened next? <laughs> What Sheila and Rachel did, I never saw that coming. And the next thing you know, Sheila and Rachel are making out. And at first, I thought they were kind of joking or like it was a dare or something. But then they kept going. They did everything that two girls could do together. Rachel and I just had this really intense connection. We didn't plan to do it in front of Skylar. It just happened. It was humiliating and awkward. I was so uncomfortable and just like uh, shocked. Not because it was two girls, because it was my two best friends. But did Sheila or Rachel care how I felt? No, they could care less. From that night on, that was a defining moment in the relationship. I thought it was gonna be our little secret, just me and Rach. But after that night, it wasn't our secret anymore. Skylar knew. I felt like I'd been slapped in the face by my two best friends, especially Sheila, because now it was really clear to me that like she was keeping secrets from me. And best friends aren't supposed to do that. She was so angry and that anger was coming out in her tweets, um, specifically directed at Sheila. Skylar, like, lost it. She was threatening to tell everybody about me and Rachel. It's like she wanted revenge. And they were trying to cover it up. They didn't want anybody to know about it. If Sheila and Rachel didn't care about my feelings, then why should I care about theirs? Maybe it was time they got a taste of their own medicine. In the end, it caused a murder and it cost one girl her life. For as long as I could remember, Sheila and I had been best friends. But after I discovered Sheila and Rachel's dirty little secret, our entire friendship blew up. Skylar said me and Rachel had betrayed her, but what she was doing blowing us up on Twitter, that was worse. I mean, it's no one's business what happened between me and Rachel. It definitely felt like our friendship was ruined, but then again, it had felt that way before. 
Every time I would be around them, there was always some type of argument, or they were latching onto each other for dear life. It, it, was, you, it was just one of the two, no in between. To other people, it was crazy. But to us, you know, it was just kind of like normal. It was weird. It was like a bipolar relationship. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Skylar, it's Rachel and Sheila. So that night when Sheila and Rachel called me up and invited me to hang out, I was like, great. Friendship back on. Well, Rachel was leaving for church camp uh, very shortly. And it was kind of a last, let's go party, let's make up. Rachel's gonna be gone for a while and, and, and let's get back together. But we weren't going to get back together. In fact, everything was about to fall apart. On July 6th, I had come home from work on a lunch break and I wanted to uh, give Skylar the car so she could go to work. And I knocked on the door and I said, Sky, honey, daddy's home. After repeatedly doing this two or three times, I finally got a coat hanger and opened the door and saw that her bed hadn't been slept in. And I said, well, you know, maybe she went shopping or something with one of the girls. At that point is when I told him to call Sheila. So I called her and she picked up the phone on her first ring. And I said, Sheila, this is Dave, have you seen Skylar? And she said, no. Okay, I know I shouldn't have lied. But then, like, my conscience got the best of me, I guess. So I called Skylar's mom back. And I told her that me, Rachel, and Skylar, we had all snuck out and gone joyriding the night before. And that was the last time I saw her. Well, then at that point, that's when I got scared. So I told Dave, I said, call 911. I said, we got to get to police. I was sitting on my couch in my living room, and my mom saw it. I think she saw it on the news, and um, she just told me, she was like, someone from UHS went missing. I asked her who, and she's like, I don't know. So I looked her up, and I saw the picture of Skylar. Sheila called me and was like, hey, did you hear that Skylar's missing? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, dude, I'm so worried. She needs to come home. Where is she? And I was like, I don't know. I swear I don't know anything. There were actually three simultaneous searches going on at the same time. There was the physical search, telephone search, and an internet search all going on at the same time, trying to locate this juvenile and reunite her with her family. The police were questioning everyone, including me and Rachel. And we told them exactly what I told Skylar's mom. They said that they'd been out with Skylar earlier in the evening when Skylar, before Skylar had gone home for good, and that they had dropped her off at the end of the street at Skylar's request so the parents wouldn't see their car. It felt like something out of a movie almost. I mean, it was intense. Everyone was worried and panicked and scared. We did anything and everything we could. We got on Facebook and posted it, uh, got posters of her, put them up. Um, got on TV, got on a radio. I told Skylar's parents, look, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. Because I knew that if it was me that was missing, Skylar would have done the same. But Rachel, she was totally MIA. She didn't do anything. Rachel was very backseat in the investigation. She did not want involved. Mary Niece thought that was suspicious, that Rachel was virtually silent, that she hadn't called, that she hadn't been by. And she even asked Sheila, where's Rachel? In the meantime, I was doing all the things someone should do and would do if their best friend was missing. Every time she'd come over, you know, first thing in the door, she'd give us a hug and we'd stand there and hug and cry. And you know, I'd keep telling her, you know, be strong, be okay, we'll, we'll find her. She knocked on the door one time. She said, do you mind if I go back and sit on Skylar's bed for a little while? I said, no, go ahead. So she went back there and she was back there probably 10 minutes. And Mary heard sobbing coming from the room, you know, crying. 
So she went back and there's Sheila with a pillow, a hug, hugging a pillow, rocking back and forth crying. And she said, Mary, how could you do this to me? I can't stand this. She's my best friend. She uh, was posting on her Facebook wall, tweeting at her, saying, please come home. I miss you. I miss my best friend. I need you back. Weeks went by, and no one heard anything from Skylar. But no one wanted to give up hope. They had, I don't know how many hundreds of sightings of her. They saw Skylar on the interstate. They saw Skylar in Saberton. They saw Skylar in Morgantown. They saw Skylar on the rail of trails. They saw Skylar at a concert. They saw Skylar. Everybody was seeing Skylar, OK? And every one of those sightings were tracked down, too. And when they came to the point where dead end, dead end, dead end, dead end, you know, or it wasn't Skylar. So then our hopes went back down. You know, we thought we was going to see her. Everything was going to be fine. And then we get crushed. Six months. Six months had gone by, and Skylar was still missing. Even I was starting to think the police would never find out what happened to her. But finally, the truth was about to come out. And soon, everyone would know about what happened the night I disappeared. Six months had come and gone and my best friend Skyler was still missing. Nobody seemed to have any information to offer, all kinds of speculation, but no information. But secrets and lies can only stay buried for so long. There was an outburst at Rachel's house. And all of a sudden, Rachel just broke down, and she had this screaming, raging fit. Her mother called 911. Uh, due to the situation of Rachel being out of control. The police recommend that the parents take her to the local psych hospital, which they do. And she spends the next five days there. Then once she was released, she was ready to talk. She was ready to tell what she did to Skylar. When Sheila called and invited me out with her and Rachel that night, I thought, Maybe this was like a sign that I'm back in with them, because that's all I wanted. I just wanted my best friends back. But me and Rachel, we wanted something different. And a couple miles up the road, there's a pull-off spot where they've all three been to before, and they've smoked weed. And they pull off there. They got out of the car. They walked a few feet from the car to a place where they could sit down. Sheila tried to use her lighter. It wouldn't work. So I got up and went back to the car to get another lighter. But I never should have turned my back on Sheila and Rachel. So once Skylar got up to go to the car, uh, Rachel counted to three. And they ran up and started stabbing Skylar in the back. Rachel, Sheila, stabbed her until Skylar stopped moving and stopped making noises. And when those noises stopped, they knew she was dead, and so they tried to bury her. They couldn't. They weren't strong enough. The ground was too hard. There was a lot of rocks in the dirt. So they just drug her over to where she was later found and covered her with brush. They went back to their vehicle and cleaned up. And then they drove home and went to bed. It was a shock to the investigators when the truth finally came out. And then Rachel led them to the remains. It was just hard to believe that in this area, the two young ladies of that age could be that cold and calculating. I mean, you had one that was going to the house, offering assistance to the family, and carrying on this charade long after the fact was done. That's psycho. Talking to your friend's parents that you murdered and telling them that you missed them, that's crazy. 
It blew my mind. And the biggest question is, why? Rachel just said they didn't like her anymore. And that's why they did what they did. She said we just didn't want to be our friends anymore, which is not a reason. It was very frustrating uh, because you couldn't make sense of anything in this case. It doesn't make any sense at all. I know they didn't like her. I mean, fine. I mean, a lot of people don't like a lot of people. Some people become friends, and then they don't like them anymore. No reason to kill somebody. It's ridiculous. There had to be more to it. There had to be. You kill someone just because you don't want to be their friend? There's no explanation for why it happened. None. And they can never give me an explanation for why it happened. Because it's a senseless, senseless killing. Sheila never did come clean about anything until she pled guilty in court. Skyler was our life. You know, they took that away from us. We just go through the motions. It'll never be the same. She was just such a happy person, and she was so loyal. Skyler always said, I love my best friends. Well, you know, Sometimes there's people you shouldn't love, and that's Sheila Eddie and Rachel Soph.